What is up guys? We're back with another BIOS video and today I'm showing you the BIOS on the Aorus Z370 Ultra Gaming. As I always say, this BIOS should be pretty much the same, maybe different skins and things like that, but it should be pretty much the same across the entire Gigabyte and Aorus Z370 line. Now, when you go into the BIOS, which is weird about this, is you're brought right into the MIT, uh, which is not typical. You don't typically see that with most BIOS is getting right into your overclocking settings. Um, but if you go down here, you can see there is an easy mode. So we can go ahead and click that. And in the easy mode, we see information on our board, our CPU temperature in real time, CPU vCore uh, and our system temperature, DRAM status right here. And you can see we have our XMP profile enabled. You can disable it, enable it just like that by clicking boot sequence. Um, here I clicked it but you can see your boot sequence and if you click on it you can go in and set your boot sequence so very easy to do one of the first things you're gonna to want to do when you you know build your system our CPU fan profile right here you can see all your fans that are connected and then their speeds in real time SATA information you can just see the SATA drives that you have connected easy OC that allows you to easily overclock your system there's normal I believe performance and then like quiet um, so you can go ahead and set it how you want it you can turn Intel rapid storage technology on or off and then smart fan 5 which is really cool that this is actually built into the BIOS is that you can go in and you can tune and configure each fan header on the board so we have CPU fan connected or selected and then you can see here that you can select whichever fan header you want, set the curve, um, and then you or you can do like a default speed control, like normal, silent, manual, full speed, all that kind of stuff. You can set, and then of course you can see your temperatures and all that kind of stuff over here. So very cool that you can do this before you even install Windows on your system, which is of course a nice thing. So that is easy mode, and again, easy mode has just everything that you're gonna need for like your first time boot up. And that's why I'm surprised you don't boot right into this for whatever reason. On our board, you boot right into the MIT, but easy mode gives you everything that you're gonna need to get your system up and running. You have your XMP profile, boot sequence, um, SmartFan 5, all that kind of stuff that you'll need to set, um, and that's it. But if you want to, of course, you can go into the classic mode and you know, tune your system, overclock, and everything like that. So in MIT, that's everything that has to do with overclocking and changing voltages and everything like that. So advanced frequency settings, here's everything that has to do with your CPU frequencies, and they have XMP in here as well, so you can go ahead and set that up. We have everything on auto, as you can see, but they do have a CPU upgrade in here, which is basically like instant overclocking, and they have it set to, uh, you know, for the different, uh, processors that are in the 8th gen line. So for our 8700K, we can do a 4.8, 4.9, and 5 gigahertz overclock instantly. That's nice if you are new to overclocking, you're not sure what to do, that allows you to easily do it. Um, well, easily at least set the settings within your BIOS so you can do that. Advanced CPU core settings, these are, again, everything that has to do with your CPU, but even more, um, you know, turbo boost, uh, turbo boost ratios, package limits, power limits, all that kind of stuff, hyper threading, um, number of cores enabled. Again, everything that has to do with your CPU is in here. So you have a lot of stuff that you can go ahead and set and change if you want. Go out of here into memory settings. This is everything to do with your memory. So XMP profile, all the different memory settings, and then you can go down to your timings and custom set your timing. So if you're, you know, overclocking your memory or you just want to tighten up your timings a little bit, you can do it in here. Under voltage settings, you have all the voltage to do with different parts of your motherboard. So under advanced power settings, we have a couple settings in here are like our load line calibrations and things like that. CPU core, everything to do with the CPU, all the C different CPU voltages you can change. Uh, Chipset, just our PCH core. DRAM, of course, all of your DRAM voltages. Um, and again, if you're overclocking, you might want to change this up. And internal VR control, all that kind of stuff. So um, one thing I like about the voltage is, is that with a lot of motherboards, you just have a voltage page and you have to go through and kind of find everything. In here, it's all organized, which is nice. Um, so if I know um, just CPU overclocking, that's it. I can just go in here and change the specific stuff for CPU if I'm doing um, DRAM, I can just go in there and do that. It's it's just a lot easier and more organized. PC, PC health status, um, this just shows you mostly your voltages. I wish there was temperatures and things like that in here, but it's not. Um, but you have that. 
and miscellaneous settings is nothing we really mess with. Just like that. I don't know why that 3D Mark I one thing is still in like every mother every motherboard BIOS is still there for whatever reason. Um, smart fan five, just again the same smart fan that I showed you guys, and that does have your your temperatures in here. I just wish they were all in the PC health status uh, thing. Under system, this just gives you information on the board you're running, um, the BIOS and all that stuff. So, you know, you, if you're not sure what BIOS you're running, you can just check right there. Under BIOS, this is like everything to do with your BIOS for the most part. Um, so like if you want the logo to show, you do have your boot options in here as well. Um, so this is, you know, you can set your different boot options, you can set your mouse speed, things like that, you know, that are just specifically for the BIOS you can do in here. You can also set a user and an administrator password if you want. Peripherals, um, this is pretty much everything to do that, you know, that's on the board. So like all of your different USB and, and all that different kind of stuff in there. I'm not going to go over everything in here, but some of the cool stuff is RGB Fusion is built into the BIOS. So if you want to set your RGB LEDs on the board before you even install Windows, you can do that. Now you are limited here. You don't have the, all the advanced settings of the actual RGB Fusion software, um, but you can set a, a mode for all of the LEDs at once. Um, so if I want to change the color, I can do that. And if I want to do like a color cycle or pulsing, I can do that before I even install Windows, which is nice. You know, while Windows installing, you can look at your system blanking or whatever you want to do. You can do that. Um, there's different stuff with the Ethernet connection. You can set um, trusted computing, NVMe configuration you can set up as well. Um, USB configuration, same thing. You can turn on legacy support, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then SATA and RST, you can see all your SATA stuff and kind of configure all your SATA drives. And under chipset, just some different things. You can turn integrated graphics on or off. If you plan to use the integrated graphics, I know a lot of you aren't going to, but this is where you're going to want to enable it if you plan to use it. Um, wake on LAN and things like that. And then under power, um, platform power management and different power things like power on by mouse, power on by keyboard, you can set all of that stuff. And then finally, under save and exit, we have two things I like here, like I always talk about, is that we have load optimized defaults. Um, so there's so many times you're overclocking and you just mess everything up. Um, I've done it so many times. And I just need to go back to the default settings. So load optimized defaults is awesome because it resets everything. You don't have to go back and reset everything yourself. And then secondly, boot override. So if there is some reason that, uh, well not actually some reason, if you plan on installing Windows from a flash drive and then you, of course, when the Windows installation restarts, you of course want it to boot from your normal hard drive, you use this and you just boot from the flash drive here, you hit enter and it just boots from the flash drive and then you, uh, you know, when it restarts, you don't have to worry about taking out that flash drive. It will just boot from your normal uh, hard drive, which of course is nice. So those are the two things I always like to see in a BIOS. It just makes the whole, you know, installation process so much easier. And that is pretty much it with this BIOS, guys. It is, I would say it is a little dated um, for what it is compared to a lot of other BIOSes. This classic mode is a little dated and while it is kind of organized, it's not as organized as I would like it, I would say. Um, you know, it's just, I don't know, it just kind of just seems dated. But it does work, it is snappy. I don't have any issues with it like lagging or anything like that. We've seen that in the past with other BIOSes. And you do have the smart mode. You also have Q flash here, um, which I didn't mention. That allows you to easily flash your BIOS. So, you know, if you need to upgrade your BIOS and you don't want to do it through the software or whatever other reason you can do it right here it's super easy to do and of course again the easy mode I do I do really like this easy mode because it has all the settings that you're gonna need when you first build your system XMP boot sequence and possibly smart fan 5 those are, those are all the things you really need um, that you can do in here so that is going to wrap this up I know I kind of you know went through this pretty fast so if you have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit that like button. And for more awesome tech content, go ahead and subscribe. Till next time, catch you guys later.